Good morning. I hope you're staying warm in this winter weather. Um, I met my coworker. He's from the southern part of Mexico, the airport. We're in Texas, and uh, he comes walking up to me in like shorts and a t-shirt, and I was like, "Jorge, what the hell is wrong with you?" He goes, "What?" I was like, "Do you not realize what the weather is like?" He goes, "No." It's like, it's negative 9 degrees centigrade outside. He goes, really? Yeah. But it's Texas. So I had to drive him to a Walmart to get him you know, winter gear and shit. Of course, we're driving out to a remote place in Texas, and I mean, my God, is it freezing cold. So if you can, check up on people. Really important. If you could donate socks to your local homeless shelter, that would, that, would, that would really help out a lot of people. Cotton socks, or even cheap cheap socks, doesn't matter. Um, for a lot of the homeless, uh, clean pair of socks on a day like this, it's, it's the difference between you know surviving the night with your foot or losing your foot in the morning kind of thing. So if you could do that, I'd, I personally would greatly appreciate that. It is cold. I haven't made a video in a while and I really felt like making one because um, I don't want you guys thinking I'm abandoning my channel. I, I've just been really, really busy with work and stuff. And um, it just, you know, I tend to focus on my family and my, my job more than anything. It's Social media is not a priority for me. Usually when you see me shitposting on Twitter, it's because I'm on the toilet kind of thing. I'm not like Patrick. I don't dedicate my entire existence to it. Which I have to say, it's Patrick's tweets and all on what's going on in the Middle East is beyond fascinating to me. Um, I know a lot of people don't like hearing anything about politics, especially on a channel that you're not used to hearing politics. Um, I don't know. My politics are probably much more aligned with, like, uh, Leslie than anybody else. If, if, if you know any of the characters in the Pat sphere, um, one of the things that I don't like about Pat is I think he's a raging, misogynistic homophobe, despite what he tries to claim. Like, he try, he's one of those people that tries to act like he's woke, but then the moment he thinks that you're going to be offended, if he uses a slur, he's going to use it. It's really, really annoying. I don't care if you like to use slurs. I just choose not to. And really, the only way I would have an issue with you using them slurs is I'm a firm believer in the First Amendment is if you use them in front of my kid or my wife and I told you not to. And I'd probably let you do it twice. And then we'd have some words. That's just how I am. If you're comfortable with it, more power to you. That's your right. I just don't like using them. And I generally look down upon people that do use them. I just I really can't stand him. He knows how to irk my... He knows how to irk me every single damn time. Pat's one of those people that'll think that because I'm a Catholic and I go to Mass... He's a better person than me because he's one of them annoying Reddit uh, atheists. He's so brilliant. So whatever, dude. You're not more educated than me, that's for damn sure. And you're certainly not more successful than me in both a professional level and a personal level. I'm allowed to be around my kid. You ain't. I still love the fact that he brings up the, the, the trolls. Taking away his Twitter account. It's like, you're more hurt from that than losing access to your daughter. Son, where are your priorities? <laughs> I still love how he, like, yada, yada, yada is out of all that. He makes it sound like he went to the DMV and his wife tricked him out of having any parental rights. I'm still amazed. I'm still amazed he does that cope. 
But the thing that's really been bugging me about Pat, and it ain't just Pat, it's, it's a lot of people on social media. They're all gung-ho with this, uh, putting as many Navy vessels in the choke point of the Red Sea. And it's so obvious we're setting up a Gulf Tonkin situation where a U.S. vessel is going to get clipped like a destroyer. And that's going to be justifications for putting uh, troops on the ground in Yemen. Sorry, I wasn't going, ooh, that is chilly. That's going to be justification for putting troops on the ground. And we're just in another unwinnable quagmire. And I'm always afraid of my son. Because this happens to us folks that uh, enlist in the military generally. It's not just like random kids that go into the military. It's usually the kids whose parents went into the military. Or it's kids like, for me, I was, ex I was escaping brutal poverty. I aged out of foster care. For any of you that never done that, uh, it sucks. Uh, I was in foster care from the age of 14 till 18. And basically when I turned 18, a uh, social worker showed up and basically asked me to sign some paperwork. And then I was allowed to leave with uh, two books and the clothes on my back. And they gave me a bus pass to go anywhere in the state of Maryland. So, yeah, that was a kick in the teeth. <laughs> Try, try being an 18 year old and securing housing with like your and you're just working at like a fast food job yeah that's real that's really easy to do that's the whole reason I ended up in the military but I'm I'm legitimately terrified that my son despite all my best efforts is gonna follow me in the military and then I'm visiting his grave site or something. Or I'm visiting him at the VA hospital because he's a human torso because he got, you know, maimed in fucking Yemen for God knows why, what reason. Well, you, you know, say what you will. We didn't learn from Vietnam, but at least after Vietnam, we had like a solid two decades before we went back to a president that was like, oh, I'm having domestic issues. I need to get us into a land war kind of thing. And it's like, we're not even four years away from, like, pulling out of Afghanistan. We're still in Iraq, by the way. I don't think people realize this. We still have bases and troops in Iraq, even though the Iraqi government has said, we don't want you here anymore. And we're like, no, fuck you. We don't care. We're just going to keep troops there. We're just going to keep wasting lives and money and all that fun shit. It's all the same crap over and over and over again. It's so lazy, you know? And, like, the people right now that are all gung-ho with the Biden administration doing this unilateral bullshit would be losing their crap if it was a Republican doing it. And the Republican people that are completely against this, they'd be fine with it if it was Trump or DeSantis or whoever the frick. Like, they'd be okay with it. It's just a prime example how, like, U.S. foreign policy and U.S. federal politics in general, it's, it's pro-wrestling. It, it, it's it's pro wrestling. It does it really doesn't matter. I've lost track of the number of people that've told me that I'm a coward and that I don't know what I'm talking about. Whenever I bring up the fact that none of you idiots are enlisting, y'all want to put American lives at risk, but you're you're not enlisting. You don't even know anyone that's in the military, so you have no skin in the game. You don't give a shit. And I've, I literally had a guy try to tell me, oh, well, it's, next thing you know, I'm not going to call the cops because someone's going to break into my house because uh, it, it puts their lives at risk. Not the same thing, dumbass. Not the same exact thing at all. We didn't learn anything. We didn't learn anything. I made a mistake one time explaining to a co-worker how I understood the average member of the Taliban when I was deployed in Afghanistan than I did the average American voter. And he he thought I was arguing that like random people having their heads cut off made sense to me. I'm like, no, well first of all that wasn't really what was happening. Second of all, they just wanted to be left alone. Like I was like the average Afghan had no idea what New York City was, let alone the World Trade Centers or the nine eleven. And if you took the time to explain it to them, their first response is, well, wait a minute, it was Saudis? 
Why are you bombing my village? We're going to go in and fix Yemen. It's a brutal civil war that's been... It's on its second decade. But we're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. Why? Oh, we have smart bombs. That's the thing that always pisses me off, too, with these people that are in love with, like, high-end, expensive weapons. U.S. military probably spent between... 1.5 million and two and a half million to train me and kit me up and deploy me four times in a row. And it was on the fifth deployment that I got blown up by an IED that probably cost about three dollars. It was a spider mine. So basically, what they did was they took an old warhead from a Soviet era shell. And the ignition system consisted of, like, the parts of a dishwasher, like the timer on it. I was probably not even the target. It was just bad luck. But here's the thing that people don't understand. When it cost 10,000 times more expensive to train up one of your guys for one of their guys, you got to have a kill ratio of 10,000 to 1 to break even. And it's not possible. There's nobody left in Afghanistan if you're trying to shoot for that. In reality, it was probably more than 10,000 to one. That's what we don't fucking get. We're bombing parts of Yemen with missile systems that are ungodly expensive. So we're never going to break even the economics of war. This is what people don't understand. Don't understand. And they'll never understand this. And then you got the people going, well, you know, the Huthu have reintroduced slavery. Oh, if slavery is an issue for the U.S., and then we have to bomb countries that have slavery, then we should be bombing Mali. We should be bombing the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We should arguably be bombing Oman and UAE, Kuwait. Are we going to do that now? Are we going to do that now? And even if we did, what is that going to do? It's just going to keep destabilizing the fucking region. It's just going to. And then you get the people that say, well... Israel is the only Western country in the Middle East. They have LGBTQ rights. Those people that say that have never once had a work, work visa in Israel. Never have. I've worked all over the Middle East. When I'm in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, it gets driven into my head very quickly. You are a dog. You're there to do the jobs that we don't want to do. And if we have a choice between an Arab spilling one drop of precious Arab blood onto the sand, or 10,000 of you idiots dying, you're not even human to us. And I'll tell you this right now, the same is true in Israel. Same is true in Israel. It's supposed to be a Western democracy, right? First of all, they outlawed any Israeli citizen, any Israeli citizen, critiquing the Netanyahu regime. That's out the window. They have completely lost their freedom of press and their freedom of speech. And then on top of this, if you get onto the wrong bus in Israel, you are likely to get stabbed because they have gender buses. They have to have gender bus services. If they don't, the hardline extremists will start firebombing buses. Once you leave Tel Aviv, it turns into Yemen real quick, real quick. Even if Israel is successful in ethnically cleansing Gaza, it doesn't fix anything because Israel is completely dependent on foreign labor. I know this because they had to employ me. They are completely dependent on cheap Palestinian labor because their young people have to go in the meat grinder of the IDF. So in my case, they don't have young engineers. They train up young engineers, and they immediately go in the IDF. And then when the guys are done with their time served, none of them are in the condition to be able to serve or to be able to work as an engineer. A lot of them, if they're not a complete train wreck, end up leaving the country. This is all. This is is Rhodesia over again. And you're going to see this. You're going to see this in the next two years. I'm calling it. You're going to see it where Israel's going to clamp down on giving are allowing their young people from working overseas and shit. They're going to start clamping it down because they have a massive demographic crisis. The young people that have to serve in the military are becoming the minority. 
there's a growing population in Israel that don't have to serve in the IDF. They don't have to pay taxes and they don't have to get jobs. They get massive government subsidies and it's unsustainable. It's unsustainable. The kibbutz farms. Notice that when the Hamas kidnapped a bunch of people, a very large portion of them were Thai foreign workers on the farms. Why? Because they don't have the young people. And Hamas treated these people fairly well, all things considering. And they were released. Thailand's not going to let their people go back in there again. And it's a red flag to all these third world countries. Like, ooh, yeah, yeah, we don't want to deal with this. Nope, we're not going to let our people go over there. I said, what is Israel going to do? They can't truck everybody from the West Bank. They can't. Because they're going to be targeting the West Bank next. Every single time that Netanyahu has internal pressures to his country, he does what the U.S. does. Blames a foreign entity. We have to go to war. Because nothing solves domestic issues like a good foreign threat. This is also damn pointless. God, I was treated like shit in Israel. Actually, I don't want to say I was treated like shit. I was treated like... Whenever I work in the Middle East. But that's the thing. If you want to really experience what uh, people think about you, don't go there as a tourist. When you go there as a tourist, oh, you're getting the best picture. You're getting the best experience. Go there on a work visa. All of a sudden, the mask is off. Now you know exactly what they think of you. Now you know. And all these idiots, all these idiots... We got to do whatever we can to keep Israel. No, we, are, you know, it's not really genocide. It's it's not war crimes. Oh my God, the crap! This is a prime example of what like Israel's running into, where they're using conscripts. It's it's no different than Russia. They're using conscripts that are not very fucking professional, and these idiots are live streaming, live streaming their war crimes. On social media and shit. It is stuff that would have gotten me in so damn much trouble if one of my guys did this kind of crap. And I've had Americans try to tell me, oh no, if you're getting shot at from a hospital, uh, we would just fly to the hospital. No, we wouldn't. Absolutely not would we do that. That, that would have given me a life sentence in, in, that would have given me a life sentence in Leavenworth if I ordered a, a artillery strike on an occupied hospital. What are you, are you insane? It's all, it's just, and the thing that Israel's having too is even when their young people are done with their IDF time, their young people are so screwed up and so messed up, they have one of the highest suicide rates among young people in the world. In the world! Like, they make Jap Japan look like it's, you know, it's a laid back place when it comes to the suicide rates. It's unsustainable. It's utterly unsustainable. You're going to start seeing the young people who are conscripted having to serve longer and longer and longer conscription time. While these aging out boomers are expected them to do more and more and more shit. It's completely unsustainable. Their economy is a goddamn mess. It's a goddamn mess. If the U.S. delayed the monthly payments to Israel by one month, their economy would implode overnight. Overnight. Yet for some reason, our current administration can't get them to the negotiation table. They are literally giving Biden the finger. And when they give Biden the finger, they're giving all of us the finger every single day. It's so absurd, absurdly insulting. Sorry, I'm screwing up my words because it's so cold out. But I digress. It's freezing cold here in Texas. I'm going to stop recording and go inside and warm up. But I apologize for the uh, political rant and all. I'm just... I don't know how anybody can serve in the military. Especially anyone that was deployed for Iraq and Afghanistan. And then you're like, yeah, sure, let's do this now. Like, I don't know how you do time in the military and not become an anti-war peacenik. But maybe that's just me. I don't know. I will say this. Whenever you're on social media and you see a lot of these gung-ho idiots who are 
talking about how they like they served and they want to expend more American lives and more American uh, resources in the Middle East, I would view their claims of military experience with a very, very critical eye. I think a lot of the people that you see on social media are full of shit. Full of shit. One of these days I'm going to make a video of like these pro-war assholes, these prominent voices on like Twitter that are talking about how we need to just keep bombing third world countries because aerial bombardment totally causes regime changes and changes on the ground. Yeah, that's how that works. We didn't try that during, you know, in Iraq and Afghanistan and it failed miserably. But anyway, I digress. Y'all take care. Stay warm. Take care of each other. Ciao.